Hey, Mr. Maestas here. In this video, we're going to be looking at continuity, limits to infinity, and something we call end behavior. So the first thing I want to talk about is what continuity is and what is a function continuous. So in the, the most basic, basic idea is that if you can draw the function and draw the entire function without lifting your pencil at all, then the function is going to be continuous. In calculus, you'll go over a little bit more what continuity is as a def the definition of continuity and how to determine if a function is continuous at a point. But for the purposes of this video, we just want to get an idea of what continuity is and what functions would be not continuous. So we call that discontinuous. So a function has a discontinuity where if for a value of x on that function, the value of x does not exist. So if I have to take my pencil off and then put it back on, I have a value of x that does not exist. Or um, for that value of x, I have a break in the graph, kind of like a piecewise function where I have to jump to the next y value then that would also be a discontinuity. So let's talk about the three types of discontinuities, look at uh, an example of each, and then we'll talk about something called a limit and end behavior. So first, the type of discontinuities. We have an infinite discontinuity. That happens when the function has a vertical asymptote. We have a jump discontinuity, and that happens when our graph is kind of like a piecewise function. We have to think about jumping to the next part of the graph and a removable discontinuity. And this is when you have a hole in the graph that if you were able to shade that hole in, you would have a continuous function. So let's take a look at each one. Number one here is a graph of y equals the absolute value of 1 over x. We see that there is a vertical asymptote right here at, x, at y equals 0. I'm sorry, at x equals 0. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. This graph, if we were to draw it from left to right, we would draw this part here, and then we would have to take our pencil off to draw the next part of the graph, which means it's discontinuous at x equals 0. This is an example of an infinite discontinuity. Taking a look at number two, we've got a piecewise defined function. Now, x is defined at negative 1 because we have a hole in the uh, circle right here. It's closed. Uh, so at negative one, negative 1, it is defined. However, if we draw our graph, we have, to physic we have to jump to the next part of the graph. We have a break in the graph, and that is a discontinuity. Specifically, this is an example of a jump discontinuity. Number three here, notice this is a line, but with one x value missing, one hole in the graph. If we were to draw this and we were to somehow fill in the hole, we would have a continuous function. This is called a removable discontinuity because we can remove it if we just fill the hole in. And we would do that by doing a piecewise function. So these two right here, are non-removable, you, you cannot do anything to this graph to possibly fill in the hole to make it, make it connect. Even if I drew a line straight up, that'd be a vertical line. It would not no longer be a function. So that wouldn't work. We cannot remove that discontinuity. Here, we can't remove a discontinuity because it's an asymptote. So we can't make the asymptote disappear and connect it. It just doesn't work. So these are non-removable. This is a removable discontinuity. Okay, so now let's talk about something called end behavior. End behavior happens, uh, it's basically what's going on at the end of the graph as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity. So, so on this side of the graph and way over here on this part of the graph, what's going on? Not necessarily in the middle of the graph, so we can have all kinds of crazy things going on in the middle. But what's going on out here? What's going on out here? And specifically, what's going on with the y value? So we're looking at the y value. And what are the changes? Or 
what does it approach? What does it do as x gets larger and larger? Or smaller and smaller towards the negative infinity. So n behavior is what is happening to the y value as x goes to infinity or as x goes to negative infinity. We call that the end behavior, the end of the graph. Now we can denote that with some new terminology, and that's called a limit. So I have here the way we write end behavior in terms of limits. This part right here goes together, and it's LIM, meaning the limit, and right underneath that is X arrow infinity. What this stands for is the limit as X goes to infinity of f of x of the function is equal to l so basically this l is a y value or it may not be a y value because uh if if it goes on forever then we don't have a limit right the limit doesn't exist because it goes on forever there is no limit so limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to L, that would be one side of the end behavior. The other part would be the limit as X goes to negative infinity of F of X is equal to L. So this describes what's happening to the Y value as X gets infinitely larger. What happens to the Y value as X gets negative in, goes to negative infinity, gets infinitely smaller. So let's look at a graph and see if we can determine its end behavior. So I have here a graph. This is just an example. It's some graph that I drew, um, but it's legitimate. Okay, we'll just take a look at it as an example. We don't need the function itself, just the picture for our, to understand what's going on. So again, we're looking at what's happening at the end, way out here, and end, way out here. So let's start with going this way. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. So what that's asking, what is the y value doing as x goes to negative infinity? Is it getting bigger? Is it getting smaller? Is it approaching a number? Is it a number? What's going on? Well, let's look at this graph. We see as x gets larger and larger and larger, or I'm sorry, negative, as x gets more negative, y is going down. y is actually getting more negative as well. So the end behavior of this function is negative infinity. We're saying that the y values are also going to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. Some books say this limit does not exist, which is okay too, because really, if we're thinking about the idea of a, a limit, to limit something means to stop it, so or to not let it get any further than that point. So if we say that there is no limit, we're saying it can go on forever. So that would be a limit that does not exist. For now, we're gonna put negative infinity because it tells us a little bit more of what's happening to y. Let's look on the other side now. The limit as x approaches positive infinity. So as x gets larger, what happens to y? Well, notice in this case, y is not really going to get smaller. In fact, what I have drawn here is a horizontal asymptote. And that means that y is going to get infinitely closer to 1 as x gets larger and larger and larger. It's going to go close to 1. It doesn't really have to touch 1, but it has to get close. It's going, it's going. As we get on infinity, what's y going to do? y is going to get closer and closer and closer to 1. So the end behavior, the limit, what does y do as x gets closer to infinity? y gets closer to 1. So the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x here is 1 because the y value approaches y equals 1. So that's the end behavior. We're looking at what's going on in the beginning and the end. And we talked about discontinuities. All right, that's it. 
Make sure you're writing some notes. Goodbye.